Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow, everyone. Wow, wow, wow. Welcome. It's so great to be connecting with all of you. You're listening to the Dr. Pat Show on Transformation Talk Radio, also on AM 1150, also on a bunch of other places. And it's really cool to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on. Uh, This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm Dr. Pat. I'm joined by my producer today, my main man, Mr. Benny. Hi, B. Hey, Pat. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're hanging, getting ready for the big weekend here. A couple of days off, right? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, of course, uh, for my little boys, they officially start <laughs> kindergarten next week, so I'm really looking forward to that, too. Oh, boy. That, I know. That's a change in lifestyle, huh? Just a little bit. No, I mean, that's not yeah. too bad. You know, I work morning, uh-huh. so it still works out fairly well with my schedule. So. Oh, very good. Wow. Wow, what a difference a couple of years make, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> They'll be driving me then after that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> going so fast. There, there you go. Yeah. I can't wait, Benny. I can't wait till one day the boys walk in and they say, hey, Dad, I think we're going to get us a couple of Harleys here. Just Harleys? <laughs> I'm open to anything. I know you are <laughs> because you're a, you're, you're a biker. <laughs> formally, yeah. I, formally, though, a couple of years ago, I, I unfortunately had to let mine go just because it was yep. just sitting there and I felt like it was time for uh, something different. So. There you that's go. right. Yeah, that's right. I like that. That's what today's show is about, too. You know, uh, what happens when it is time for something different? You know, today I get to chat with uh, Dr. Dorothy Riddle joining me here today. You know, book, fabulous book, Moving Beyond Duality. You're going to hear what that means. What is that really about? Moving Beyond Duality, enough for us all. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. You know, this is really a conversation about you know, who is the us that's showing up? Why do we behave in ways that are not just harmful for others, but harmful to ourselves? So today, uh, Dr. Riddle is going to be talking with us about duality. You know, what are these dualistic habits? How do we learn them? What do we do with them? How do they show up? And does our brain have anything to do with this at all? And if this is it for us, the it of it, the it of duality, uh, then how do we make sense of this in a way that gets us from where we are today to where we want to go? Yeah, this is a big conversation about all of the above. For those of you out there, uh, Dr. Dorothy is a psychologist. She's also a social change specialist, a spiritual coach. Um, She's also chairperson of the board of directors, a school for esoteric studies, all of the above. But why is it that today in the world we live in, whether we're talking about principles of abundance, as she has done so many times, or we're talking about positivity, what is it about duality that gets to run the show? Well, that's what we're talking about here. Hey, Dr. Dorothy, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much, Pat. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Okay, let's start with the conversation about duality. Now, we have amazing listeners, and they are really quite sophisticated in so many ways. But I think most of us get confused on the idea and the topic of duality. I don't think for myself that it's something that, you know, I grasp very well. However, I do know that there are some parts of it that are not in service of who I want to become. Tell us what duality means and what you've discovered about it. Uh, thanks. The, the basic issue with duality is that we create two categories. And whenever we create two categories, it's very easy, first of all, to 
think that one category is better than the other. And it also means that we ignore everything in between because, in fact, our world is not dualistic. We say things like, uh, it's like night and day, but what about dawn? What about dusk? You know, there there's a whole continuum through the 24 hours. So dualistic thinking uh, is... It's like a lazy way of thinking. It's a very easy way of dealing with all the stimuli that we have, of just putting it into two places, two buckets. And then Mm. that's what leads us into violence, because we make Mm. it us versus them. That is the danger of duality. Yeah. Well, the us versus them. I mean, we are in the heat of a political election here. And we got a lot of us versus them going on in the world. And it's not just us. I mean, we're, we've looked at what went on in the UK, and we're, we're getting a lot of this energy right now on the planet. Someone said to me, well, energetically, it makes sense. You know, so we look at it and we say, oh, it's a nine year. Oh, it's this. It's, it's a change. It's transformation. But my sense in reading the book is that Duality has been something that has been with us for a really long time. You know, can you talk historically about how it has shown up for humans? Sure. Uh, First of all, I think it's important for us to understand how we deal with our world, because that's really where it starts. We are, we're not aware of it necessarily, but we are bombarded by thousands of stimuli every minute and are, you know, colors, uh, sounds, feelings, all kinds of things, and our our brain has to process it quickly. And so our brain has two levels of uh, dichotomies. The first is it says, do I have to pay attention to this at all? (laughs) And then if I have to pay attention to it, the second question is, can I store it and deal with it later, or do I need to deal with it now? So Mm -hmm. we, we have this uh, this pattern that goes on and it trains us in a certain way to think in just two categories but our world is much more complex and interesting than that whenever, if you look back through history whenever yeah. you you have this kind of us-them that's the basis of oppression that's the basis of uh, you know political domination that's that's the the basis of all of the violence that we get into is when we put this kind of simplistic, dualistic template on the world out there. Well, let's talk about what the dualistic template looks like, if we could, for a minute, and how it shows up in our behavior. I mean, you've put together a beautifully written book about so many, so many things. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything from affirming a hostile bigotry uh, mm-hmm. to looking at how to move beyond it. You know, Mm -hmm. objectifying non-humans. I mean, there's so very much in this book that, Mm -hmm. you know, the question comes to mind. And and by the way, I should mention volume three, (laughs) Enough for Us All. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's talk for a minute, if we could, about the kind of harm that scarcity mentality does. (laughs) Sure, sure. Yeah. Because that's, that's actually where I started my work, was on that myth of scarcity. Uh, And what the world is really about. The way it plays out in terms of duality is that we have we have patterns of violence. In fact, I would say we do not have a shared experience of living harmlessly together. There is mm. so much violence in our world at so many levels that we simply take it for granted. We don't even notice it. You mentioned hostile bigotry, uh, Pat. That's the first way. That's the the most obvious. You know, that's that's where we uh, we kill and torture and torment each other or other people. Uh, But there are more subtle forms, uh, and then we get into benevolent bigotry, where we treat somebody warmly, but paternalistically. And so what we're really conveying, it's a very mixed message, what we're really conveying is you can't really manage your life, dear, and it's often directed at women, not always at women, but often Mm -hmm. at women. 
And it's a very confusing message because it sounds like it's positive, but it's not. It's very demeaning. And if I can just explore that one for a moment, one of the things that's so challenging for women, and we see this playing out in the political arena right now, is that women have basically two choices. Mm -hmm. They can be warm and nurturing, or they can be competent. If they are seen as warm and nurturing, then they are seen as incompetent. There's lots of research to support this. If they're seen as competent, they're assumed to be cold. And one of the most common criticisms of Secretary Clinton is that she's cold. It comes right out of this dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. Then we... And yet everything you hear about her, and, you know, let's talk about this when we come back from break. You know, everything you hear about her, I mean, when you hear uh, somebody like Cher talk about, ah, I just spent the weekend, I just spent the weekend with, uh, you know, Hillary in, in, in P-Town in, uh, on Cape Cod, and we just had a blast and we're dancing. And mm-hmm. it's like not a single bit of that coverage hit the media. So That's this right. is the question that I'd like to ask. You know, are we also being faced the duality of mass media bias? Let's take a short break, everyone. Lots to talk about. Dorothy, Dr. Dorothy Riddle joining me here today, Moving Beyond Duality. We've got a copy of the book to give away, everybody. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Are you feeling stagnant or blocked in your love life, career, health, or finances? experiencing difficulty focusing or setting and achieving goals tune in to spiritual diagnostics radio with psychic visionary healers carol dorian and suzanne evans discover the cause and effect of unwanted patterns in life tune in every tuesday at 12 p.m pacific on transformation talk radio for more information visit spiritualdeed.com are you searching searching? looking for a sign sign. a message you need to hear from the great unknown from the most mysterious place that is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are the The universe puts someone here to talk to someone god gave a blessing to that you may find insight with the angel lady.net 1-800-323-1790 Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Badili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. 
That's AtanaMethod.com. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, I want to make sure that all of you, Dr. Dorothy Riddle is joining me here today. You know, Moving Beyond Duality is, you know, the fabulous book, Enough for Us All. Uh, But what Dr. Dorothy really does talk about is, I think, uh, is the elephant that's still in the room. (laughs) The elephant that's still in the room. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in, in quite some detail. And, and I love, I love that uh, Dr. Dorothy has got some stories to share with us. But before we do, I want to make sure you know, you can find out more about uh, this book and about uh, Dr. Dorothy's work by going to the website, uh, www.enoughforusall.com. Enough for us all.com. And Benny, I would love to be able to give away the first copy of, we have two copies to give away during the show. First copy of the book, Moving Beyond Duality. 1 800 930 2819. That's our toll free number. And we'll go ahead and give a copy of the book away to our first caller. 1 800 930 2819. You know, um, Dr. Dorothy, we were talking during the break, and I know that in the book you talk about the fact that, you know, that that less than 5% of us are free from prejudice, right? Mm -hmm. And yet we're living in a world now where uh, uh, same-sex marriage is passe now. That conversation we think is is old and dead. Uh, Conversations about women in the workplace, breaking the glass ceiling, all of the above, you know, I'm just shocked that we're kind of out here thinking that, wow, what a great time it is to be alive. I'm thinking to myself, my gosh, uh, wow, it's taken like a lot of decades to even get to where we are. But yet, here's what I want to say about it, is we don't really have to look twice now to see that we are not free from prejudice. We're just, we're not. I mean, and the elephant in the room is no longer invisible. It's out there. I think it's just been in the shadows waiting. What do you think? Well, I wish I could agree with you, but I think that Mm -hmm. there is a lot more unconscious stuff going on. Like I just got an email this morning from a client uh, saying that she would have the girls finish coding by the end of the day. Now, these these (laughs) women that she's referring to are in their 40s, and 50s and you would never say I'll have the boys finish the coding Um, I'd like to share with you a story about Secretary Clinton if I could that I think illustrates this sure I had I had the opportunity to attend a high-level international meeting that was chaired by Secretary Clinton while she was Secretary of State very formal you had to be vetted you know three four five different times I happened to be the aide to the foreign minister from Canada that was attending. That was why I was there. Uh huh. Secretary Clinton began the meeting. She was the chair, and ministers from different countries spoke. And more than half of the time, they addressed her as Hillary or Mrs. Clinton. The only acceptable form of address in that forum would be Madam Chair or Secretary Clinton. They never addressed each other in less formal terms than that. Nobody called a man by his first name in that room. Mm. 
And what, what, I, I'm curious to, to hear what you make of that. So to me what that says is that the stereotypes are alive and well, that mm -hmm. women are just never quite at that uh, peak of respect, that peak of uh, being viewed as very, very competent, uh, someone that has to be dealt with uh, very formally. But instead, they can be treated as though they were their sister or their, their friend. And that plays back. That's, again, an example of, you know, you can be warm or you can be competent. And if someone is, these were all people that were speaking positively about her, but they were speaking mm -hmm. to her actually with disrespect in that context. Well, well, I have to, I have to say that we've actually brought disrespect to a whole new level here, though. Uh, it, it, you know, something that I, I thought I'd never see again in my life. I mean, you know, I come from a generation where my boss would start staff meetings telling a dirty joke, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you know, if you were a person of color. Uh, those jokes could have been about you as well. I mean, you know, you, we, we're thinking that that this is really kind of gone. These are the days that have gone by. Uh, your book, though, is called Moving Beyond Duality. I, I would like to talk about stereotypes for a minute because mm -hmm. that's a term that we don't use much anymore, yet we had spent decades and decades and decades trying to help each of us understand what they actually mean, uh, what happens when we're using them, and uh, what the damage is from that. Mm -hmm. and, and you address it in the book. So I would love for you to talk about why is understanding, you know, this type of framing so important? Thank you. The, uh, what goes on when we stereotype someone is we stop seeing them as an individual. We stop seeing them as being unique in and of themselves, and we see only the attributes that we attribute to a particular group. And when they do anything that we think is like that stereotype, we say, oh yeah, see, I was right. And if they do anything that's not like the stereotype, they say that we ignore it, literally, or we say, ah, well, it was just an exception. And mm. so it's extremely difficult uh, the research shows it's extremely difficult to get yourself out of a stereotype box once somebody has put you into that box. Um, and so, and we again, this goes back to that mental uh, habit that we have. We need to process information really quickly so it's easy to have these boxes. We just dump somebody into a box and then they are they they stop being themselves they just become this iconic stereotype mm. Mm. tell 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 the audience for a minute because there may be some folks listening that you know have a have a general idea of what a stereotype is but not not exactly not mm -hmm. exactly you know clear about that yeah i mean we we've, we've so, certainly heard heard enough about it you you know uh, uh it, it recently here in the media but for folks that that may not be familiar with the mm -hmm. term uh please walk us through this if you don't mind sure so stereotypes are of two types they can be descriptive of like physical uh characteristics or more damaging they can be what we call prescriptive which is what somebody uh, does or should do. So we say um, women are wonderful caregivers. Women are really good with children. Well, some women are, some aren't. Uh, some men are, some men aren't. Uh, we say blacks have wit rhythm. We have a yes. lot of these kinds of statements that uh, that describe stereotypes. Blacks are athletic is mm -hmm. another one. Um, and once that stereotype gets put on someone, then that's the standard that they're held to. Their own individuality is ignored. Mm. Well, we go through that and do that a lot. I mean, I come from an Italian family. Mm -hmm. uh, 
now now we can talk stereotypes here in a minute, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody knows but you're I, Italian. They think they know certain things about you, which may or may exactly. not be true. Yeah. Exactly. Now, I, I, and certain I'll assumptions give you, are made. Yeah, right? and I'll give you a different type of stereotype. Yeah. Um, if somebody knows that my parents had doctorate degrees, that I have a doctorate, they make certain assumptions about me, and, and that I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm, I'm also Canadian. Uh, uh-huh. They make certain assumptions about me. But I grew up in China and India. I didn't. I didn't live in the U.S. really until I was in college. That's mm-hmm. not what shaped me. Other cultures shaped me. I grew up without electricity. I grew up without television. I grew up where you walked everywhere you went or you rode a bike. Uh, so the image that people would have of me is very different than than what my life was actually like and the cultural values that shaped how I see the world. Oh, yeah. So I become and, invisible to somebody, invisible. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I could see that, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I and then for me... I become bigger than life because here I am on radio, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and for, this is like 14 years doing this and I'm on radio. Then I go out into a networking event, right? And I'm mm-hmm. sitting at a table of people and we're all sharing. And my gosh, I have maybe five sentences to say. Mm-hmm. And people want to know if there's something wrong with me. And they spend pretty much, are you okay? Is there something wrong? Is the food not good? Do you need more mm-hmm. coffee? And I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. And I finally at one of the events had to stop and say, do you know the Myers-Briggs uh, assessment instrument, personality assessment? And everybody nods. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. I said, let me explain a little bit about me if it makes sense. And I went on to say that, you know, when uh, in my corporate job, I actually had to take the assessment three times on three separate occasions. My score was so on the introvert side Mm -hmm. that it was in the small teeny part of the uh, end of the bell-shaped curve. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and And the consultants that were in couldn't understand it. Mm -hmm. But what happened with that is my boss looked at that and they actually deemed me unfit to manage Mm -hmm. because of their view. Now, clearly that's, that wasn't the case, but the stereotype around this is how we make decisions about each other. When we come back, we're going to talk with Dorothy about what are these decisions that get made and how can we break through to a change? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big one, and I really am an introvert. I know many of you listening to the show are thinking, nah, that can't be. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you anxious, worried, or insecure? Hi, I'm Dr. Friedman Schaub. I'm the author of The Fear and Anxiety Solution. Join me for my next breakthrough video seminar, which starts on September 10th. This program has helped thousands of people worldwide to overcome their struggles with anxiety, and I'm certain it can also help you. If you're ready to be free again and have a stronger foundation of inner peace and confidence, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. Have you wanted to make more money without working harder or more? Maybe you've tried new ways to bring in extra income without success. Hi, my name is Deb Acker, and in addition to being the host of Truth Talk Radio, I'm an intuitive life coach and energy healer. I clear energy blocks to all areas of life, including abundance. Did you know many times we have an invisible income ceiling? So no matter what we do, our income never goes up, or if our income does go up, we experience an unexpected expense that negates this. How much would it be worth to significantly increase your income or even have unexpected income show up? When I was in the corporate world, I used these techniques to increase my income by tens of thousands of dollars without changing my work routine. In fact, I worked even less, and I now help clients do the same. If this resonates for you and you're truly ready for abundance in your life, I'd love to gift you with my pattern identification session. Simply contact me on the contact page of my website, deborahacker.com. That's D-E-B-O-R-A-H-A-C-K-E-R.com. And let me know you heard about this gift through Transformation Talk Radio. I look forward to connecting soon. Hey, everybody, welcome back. For more information about us, please go to the drpatshow.com or go to transformationtalkradio.com. If you want to find out more about the show that I do on Wednesdays at 1 um, on Transformation Talk Radio, it's called Lime Talk Radio, L-Y-M-E Talk Radio, and it's everything and anything about Lyme disease. We are really on a mission about that in the world and we've got lots more to come. We're planning a major crowdfunding initiative on that and a whole new way to educate the, the world about uh, the many faces of Lyme disease. Today, joining me is Dr. Dorothy Riddle. And of course, I've mentioned the book is called Moving Beyond Duality. Phone line uh, is open, 1-800-930-2819 to receive a copy. If you're not able to call into the show, go to transformationtalkradio.com, click on the player button on the right, and when you do, you'll be able to send in your information so we can get you a copy of the book. And we'll take the first caller uh, and the first person to send the message in. Benny is on it. Dr. Dorothy, what else would you like to share with people? What can they uh, know about you, your work, and some of the other publications you have before we jump back into the conversation here? Well, thank you, Pat. Uh, the uh, Enough for Us All series actually has three volumes. The first volume is Principles of Abundance for the Cosmic Citizen, and it goes into the, the practical implications of what we know from quantum physics and the life sciences and the social sciences, like the fact that we are actually all connected energetically. This Mm -hmm. is not just a a metaphysical statement. And we do uh, affect our reality by our perceptions and our thoughts. And we are basically cooperative beings, not competitive beings. The second book is Positive Harmlessness in Practice, because Every spiritual tradition says, do no harm, but nobody tells you how to do that. What does that really look like? Uh, And so it goes through how we go from just uh, keeping ourselves from being blatantly harmful to actually being harmless in the world. And then the Mm. third volume that we're talking about today is the moving beyond duality. Yeah. But there are a couple of of, uh, forms of... uh, duality that we haven't talked about yet. Could I just touch on those? Yes, Pat? yes, please. Okay, so we've talked about hostile bigotry, we've talked about benevolent bigotry, 
We've talked about stereotyping. Another is dismissiveness or invisibility, literally not seeing someone. And one of my favorite examples of this is Richard Gere, the very well-known actor uh, who's been invo- uh, actively involved in New York City in homelessness, was making yeah. a film about that. He sat begging on the streets of Lower Manhattan for 40 minutes, and nobody recognized him. Mm. He was dressed as a homeless person. People just walked by, averting their eyes. He said it was a soul-destroying experience. Mm. So we, I just want to mention that we are dismissive of others. Uh, we ignore certain people or groups, but we're often dismissive of ourselves. We have intuitions, we have feelings of something we, that we ought to be doing or that's important for us, and we push it to a side. So it's not just externally. And then finally we have objectification, which is treating other people or other species even as objects, just as objects for, uh, to do something for us. And we, ha- we do this through uh, sexualizing them, through psychological abuse, Three million children in the United States are the victims of psychological abuse every year. Uh, We do human trafficking. We have 36 million people being trafficked every year, uh, either uh, as sexual slaves or as bonded labor. Uh, And that's also in the United States. It's not just in other countries. And the most... uh, to me disturbing aspect is that the growth, in, it, it is a growth industry, and the growth part of it is trafficking in organs, that is mm, taking right. healthy organs out of people and selling them to hospitals. Um, so we have, and then with young girls, we have 30% of the clothes now for young girls are sexualized. These, these are prepubescent girls. Uh, where sexuality shouldn't be playing a role in uh, in their lives. So each of us has some aspect of this, or virtually everyone has some aspect of the ways in which we depersonalize other people. We treat them as other, and that allows us to then be harmful towards them. Well, you know, we we live in this world as if, okay, this is a lot. To, to handle, right? But let's talk about some of the solutions you provide and mm-hmm. and where we can start. You know, it's kind of like let's follow the breadcrumbs. And there are breadcrumbs. There are, mm-hmm. there, there are decades of breadcrumbs, you mm-hmm. know, to follow. Um, how would you guide us along the way with this? Well, the most, this is a really important uh, issue. The most important thing is that we have to start noticing when it's happening. We Mm -hmm. have to start uh, monitoring, and we can't do all of it, Pat. It's impossible to to look at all areas. But just take one little area of our life and monitor. I'll tell you one of the first exercises I did with myself, and this is years ago now, was I said for a half an hour each week, I was going to not say something that was dualistic. It's amazing how many times we do. So instead of saying, for example, I can't go, then I had to stop myself and say, well, what are some of the other options, right? Uh, I could go later. Um, I could find out from the person who was inviting me um, what went on later. Mm -hmm. Challenging myself to put out several other options always, a third, a fourth, a fifth option, so that I Mm -hmm. stopped this yes, no, either, or type thinking. You can find little experiments to to do. Uh, one One of the ones that I'm working on right now is making sure that I actually see somebody as a person and not just somebody there for my convenience. So... For example, when I go to the grocery store, if the person has a name tag, I will thank them by name instead of just Mm. walking away with my groceries. If somebody comes comes to the house to do a service, um, 
if I don't know what their name is, I'll ask them. I'll say, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. And then I'll thank them. If I'm on the phone and somebody's particularly helpful, what I try to do is not only thank them by name, but tell them why it made a difference to me. Even if it's as simple as saying, you know, you made my day by solving this problem for me. Mm -hmm. Um, That makes it a person-to-person interaction rather than a person-to-object interaction. And it's just Mm -hmm. heightening my own awareness of that. So in the research, what the researchers have have shown is that if people will start monitoring, and in this situation they were asking people to journal at the end of every day about a particular issue, which was sexist remarks, Mm -hmm. suddenly they went from thinking that there were none to noticing that 30 to 50 percent of what they were hearing was actually sexist. Wow. Once you notice it, you can do something about it. But first you Mm -hmm. have to know what's going on. When we look at the world, and I want to talk with you about this when we come back, uh, and we look at what, and let's let's just say it right now, enough for us all, enough for us all. When we look at the world, it seems like a leap to get to the place where we actually believe this. I would like to take a short break. Dr. Dorothy Riddle joining me here today. Enoughforusall.com is a website you can go to find out more about it. But when we come back, I want to talk about Enough For Us All. What does it take to get there? How do we get from scarcity to abundance, from fear to joy? How do we create these shifts, everyone? Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. What is a brilliant culture? And how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you design a culture that is authentic, innovative, and successful. Learn how to create change with Cultural Brilliance Radio, the DNA of organizational excellence and Claudette Rowley. To learn more or work with Claudette, Visit ClaudetteRowley.com. Are you sick of feeling overworked with no motivation? Take a break from the daily grind. Life coach Nicole Eisler is here to provide a healing journey of optimism. Passionate and caring, Nicole is no ordinary soul. Her dedication to helping everyone has no limit. Witness the power of positivity. Tune in every first and third Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific for Positivity Party Radio with Nicole Eisler on Transformation Talk Radio. For more information, visit BigDreamAwakening.com. Are you tired of being tired? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know the adrenal glands, the workhorse of the body? They are the means by which you position yourself in life for whatever comes your way. Tiny but mighty, producing hormones the body uses to promote energy and vitality. These adrenals determine how you respond to stress and when depleted, 
The body loses its ability to function powerfully when we need it most. The much-needed adrenaline or epinephrine is not available for emergency situations. Cortisone and cortisol, the longer-acting anti-stress adrenal hormones, can also become depleted due to the pace of our everyday lives. We overwork and undernutrition our most powerful ally that helps us to live the lives we desire. We are able to determine the optimum function of the adrenals and put your system back in balance. Contact us today to feel powerfully energized at 888-777-4232 or visit us at maryjanemack.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, What a great show. I'm so thrilled to be chatting today with um, my very special guest, you know, Moving Beyond Duality with Dr. Dorothy Riddle. Dorothy Riddle. Um, You know, Dr. Riddle, what we're going to talk about here next is what can we do about it? How do Mm -hmm. we go from scarcity to abundance? How do we go from fear to joy? And I know this has been a lifetime of work for you. So uh, anything you could offer here is super appreciated. (laughs) Sure. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, one one of the shifts that we have got to make, and I, I don't have a prescription for how to do this, I just know it's really important, is we've grown up with this model of the world, this Newtonian physics model that only what's, what you can see and feel is real, that you can know the whole if you just know the part, that it's uh, everything's determined, uh, that objectivity is the best, and that's not the way the world is at all. And quantum physicists have been trying to tell this for tell us this for 150 years. And I first came across this in the 1980s when the Christian Science Monitor ran a five-part series trying to explain to people what the world is really like. And yet I, I find it hasn't really uh, penetrated very much. The reality is that we are all energetic beings, that there is, in fact, uh, plenty for us, but it has to do with our attitudes about what we see as being or what we believe uh, is enough. And the advertising industry has certainly driven us in the direction of more is better, uh, which is a problem. But I want to share with you one interview that I heard recently. Uh, There was a tiny house conference going on. And a woman uh, was being interviewed. And uh, I'll just start by saying that I feel very comfortable in my 2,300-square-foot home. Uh, She said that she had downsized to 800 square feet and felt that that was really too large. And so she commissioned a home to be built for herself that's 250 square feet. And it's just the perfect size, she says. And she said when she goes shopping, uh, it's really interesting because she only has a certain amount of physical space. And so she doesn't get into just buying things because it would be fun to buy them, but she really thinks about, is that something that I want to put in my space? Is there something I'm willing to move out in order to have that come in? So she, because she has said that she wants a particular type of life, she's very satisfied with that. She feels that she has plenty, she feels blessed that she has as much as she does. And yet we know people in six, you know, uh, 6,000, 60,000 square feet homes Mm -hmm. who feel that they don't quite have enough. So it's our own internal attitude that shapes what we, uh, how we experience things. And this gets us to perception, which you mentioned before, Pat. How we perceive the world. What screen we put on it, what what our values are, what we say is important, um, and things are, the, the, the research is so fascinating. There's a, mm-hmm. a recent study, it's, it's not the only one, it's just one in a series, showing again that by the way in which we think, we can change the past. How we perceive the present can literally change the past. Life is not as static as we think it is, but there are limits. 
mean we can burn up all the forests, we can burn up all the fossil fuels, we can kill off all the fish. Uh, it's possible for us to create limitations for ourselves, but the universe is not really like that. Mm-hmm. And so we get fearful when we think that it is that everything is predetermined that that we're in competition. That's another image that has uh, haunted us. So the Darwinian theory, I, I have a feeling he was misunderstood, but it's been interpreted that way, you know, the survival of the fittest. And yet, if you look at the, the work of biologist uh, Lynn Margulis, for example, and others, uh, what she shows is that it's really networking uh, that is what has created us and what allows us to survive. We need each other. We are interdependent with each other. When we recognize that, when I don't see myself as isolated, when I know I have a whole community I can draw on, how can I not feel rich? How can I not feel blessed? And I think this is really the reminder of of what happens when we do come together. I think we're really extraordinary here, um, especially, you know, I can't talk for other countries, but in the United States. And what we've gotten to watch and experience has been how we rally together especially in the face of, uh, of, of crisis. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, being from New York, there's nothing uh, that I, I probably won't ever see anything as tragic as 9-11. And, you know, when we're looking at a scenario like that, what doesn't really get talked about all that often is how, how everyone came together around this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what did people do to really come together to really speak up, to really support what was happening. We don't talk about that very much. I mean, that gets kind of overshadowed by the political nature of its time. But that took an extraordinary, extraordinary group of people to Mm -hmm. come together to literally rebuild. You know, that's just one example. Every day, communities come together to support each other, don't we? Yes, we do. And another piece of the 9-11 story that, Mm -hmm. to me, was not told as much as as it should have been, but I Mm -hmm. know from friends of mine there in Washington State that in communities uh, where there were Muslim families, people came together to make sure that those children were safe on their way Mm -hmm. to school, Mm -hmm. that nothing happened to them because of being stereotyped, right? as being yeah. from a particular faith. And so, so those are stories also that are important. And yet somehow our media has gotten uh, focused on violence. You know, if you, if you think about it, it's the, it's the fires, the robberies, the shootings, the, uh, the outrageous statements that are the ones that attract attention. It's like we get an adrenaline fix from them. Instead of the stories of goodwill and generosity and gratitude and communities coming together, which is what we really need to be learning from. Well, you know, I want to thank you for for joining me here today. And I want to thank you for the message that you bring out into the world and all you do. I, I would love to ask you what your personal message is and what you'd like to leave us with today. I would say pay attention. Mm. Pay attention to the abundance that is around us, to the wonderful people that are around us. Pay attention to how we treat each other. Mm. Thank you so much for today. Dr. Dorothy Riddle, everybody. I want to thank everybody for tuning us in and turning us on. And you know, yes, another hour coming up on TransformationTalkRadio.com. We'll see you next time, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Dorothy. This was an amazing conversation with you today.
preceding audio was via a Skype call.